from the Augusta National Golf Club in Augusta, Georgia, welcome to the Masters. Hello friends, and welcome back. What a week at the Augusta National Golf Club. John Rahm wins the Masters Marathon, earning his first green jacket. What a weekend. I'm joined by my co-host T-Bone, who enjoyed the broadcast as well. What were your thoughts on the 87th edition of the Masters? <laughs> man, I can't do that Jim Nance intro. That, that was, oh, man. Well, the music's was still probably flawless. playing on. We're going to add this under under post here. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the 300 Part Podcast, because this is a golf podcast where... Little White Ball's life. I'm your host, Scotty T, and I'm joined by my co-host, T-Bone. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I have watched so much golf. I got my fix. It was a great Masters, and we got a lot to cover. Man, that is so true. Great week. Phenomenal week. The entire golf world was back on the grounds at Augusta National Golf Club. A ton to break down. Uh, so, yeah, we're just going to dive right into it. Before we do, follow us on social media at 3 for pod That is the number three, 3 for pod Twitter, Instagram. Subscribe, rate, and review. Give us that five-star rating. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's kind of getting into it, actually, with some people because I posted a, a video of me swinging saying, try to guess my handicap. And people were like, pretty much saying there's no way that my handicap is what it is. And I was like, <laughs> all right, like, sorry. I did <laughs> Anyway, so I got a response video that would be dropping tomorrow in uh, in response to those. So anyway, that's why I got to subscribe, comment, because I would share back to you. But Augusta National, the Masters Tournament, what a week. Some amazing moments, some major disappointments as well. Keebone, what were the few things that caught your attention? First off, congratulations to John Rom on winning the green jacket. Well, first off, congrats to Scotty T., for his first ever win of the pickup. Um, That's right. I obviously I wanted to win, but I think you gave a lot of cred to the podcast when you have a golf podcast and you win a pick them. Um, that's pretty impressive. Uh, almost okay. almost ran away with it. But the one asterisk I want to put by it is that um, you didn't pick Matt Fitzpatrick. It's been your ride or die for years. <laughs> mostly die, mostly been your die, yep. and uh, you didn't you didn't ride with the man. So, and then he has a great week. <laughs> it's like finally he has a great week at Augusta National. I've been on this guy for years, but look, in my defense, the way that it was shook out, uh, because T Bone hosted the pick. First off, great job. I got a lot of feedback actually from people in the pool who loved your commentary. Your eat your nightly recap emails were on point i it looked like maybe you had a few cocktails before you sent them out to it was I, i'm not i'm not saying it one way or the other but they kind of read like it a little bit but it was fantastic yeah. very well done hosting the pool and so if you want to be a part of it next year let us know and we'll add you to the email chain so shout out to dumpy i sent him the email and he was not in it so sucks to suck but okay kj suck it because I beat you and I beat everybody. <laughs> oh, fantastic. But look, I, I was able to get Jordan Speed, Scotty Scheffler, and then I happened to pick Kefka, who had who finished T second. And then uh Jason Day was definitely the surprise though. I was like, man, he's riding hot. That turned out to be a pretty good one for me. Yeah. With a, a casual 80 on the on Sunday. But before we get into everything, I think we got it, we gotta start with Rom break it down a little bit um for me it felt like for the longest time with the tournament when brooks was kind of separating himself it felt like ron rom was never gonna win and then you know after a whole six or so on sunday it felt like he was never gonna lose so pretty dominating performance any kind of drama that came up was immediately put to rest with, with Rob. And I think that the, the exclamation mark was the tight draw on 13. When I first saw it, I saw the ball tracking and it looked like it was going to the Creek. And I was like, this could be trouble. And he picks up the tee and I was like, Oh, I guess that's a good drive. And it was went forward and two, no, no issues. 
makes birdie. And at that point, I was like, this is going to be pretty tough to lose. This is going to be pretty tough for Ron to lose, especially with who he is and how he's playing. So I uh, I was hard, hard against Brooks. Did Something did not feel good about having Brooks. And I don't know if it was so much against Liv. Kind of. I, I think that was kind of feeling it. But um, I don't know. I just was so happy with the result. Was so against Brooks winning. But, uh, but man, he played really good. Um, I had no expectations from him. He wasn't even on my radar. And it felt like he was going to run away with it at points for sure. Yeah. No, it's one of the things that I thought whenever I was watching – the tournament because to your point john rom just didn't make big mistakes i mean i think that's really came down to and when i was i mean i'm looking at his fourth round he had one bogey on nine that was it and that was and then you know he started off the day two back and then brooks just you know what he shoot 75 on the last day like or on the on the final, yeah, on round four, he shot 75, 73, round three. You know, he's sitting at T12 after uh, going into the weekend. He got the right side of the draw. I mean, John Rahm, he didn't get the right side of the draw either and still managed to weather the storm quite literally, comes out on top. But my thought was, do you remember in the mat, in the Players' Championship in 2019 when he <laughs> just absolutely imploded? He goes for that green on 11. And he just – he starts yelling at his caddy and just has a meltdown. Rory ends up winning the Players' Championship that year. This is not the same John Rom. This is the maturity that we were all looking for. We all knew that John Rom had the talent. We all knew that he was going to do it. But golf is such a mental game. And if you keep doing those things, you can develop those mental scars, which I'm sure we will talk about with Rory McIlroy here later on in the podcast. But this is not the same guy, even just – Four years ago, sure, four short years because COVID seemed like it was a time warp, but he won the U.S. Open. He Now he's a Masters champion. John Rahm, and I heard uh, one person say it. I think it was uh, Daniel Rappaport at Foreplay. We have such a short memory. He's won three times on tour. It's, you know, there's that clip going around, be like a goldfish. I think us as golf fans are like goldfish. We have a 10-second memory. Oh, Scotty Scheffler's best in the world. Oh, Rory McIlroy. John Rahm has won four times now this year. He has one bad showing at Bay Hill. He has a he withdraws from the players and then plays not great at match play. And then we forget about him and he goes out and win the Masters. Absolutely <laughs> unbelievable performance. Again, didn't do anything stupid. I think that's what it came down to. He played the golf course the way he it's like um, you know, you would hear Kobe and whatnot say, Hey, I let the game come to me. That's what it felt like. It felt like John Rahm let the course come to him. And play with what he got, and he just he looked great. Ends up winning before. Yeah, I I think I don't want to be this guy, but I think I was saying this in our preview Masters pod. I was saying it, he's lurking around as a um with worse odds, but from uh, Rory and uh, Scotty. And I started thinking about it. it was like we we also talked about defending is tough. That's pressure. We know Rory has fucking pressure here. <laughs> we know he has pressure. And then Rom is insane and he's being ruled out. I mean, it was it was the perfect storm for him to just dominate this tournament uh like he did. But no, I, I totally agree. Different person. He had a game plan, stuck to it, nothing crazy. I'm gonna make pars, birdies when I can. That was pretty impressive. But uh the one last thing on Brooks was as much as I hated Brooks and rooted against him, it was cool to see that dominating, confident player at the at the majors again. There is something about Brooks that's awesome to watch in majors. Hadn't seen that in forever and was kind of shocked that he still had it. But um yeah, that that was kind of a good that was a good uh, one and two right there. But you know, if I'm being picky. It was a little boring. I think we knew Rom was going to win, but all things considered, I'm happy with how it played out and the result there. Yeah, I, I really got that feeling. And what was it on 12 or something like that? Whenever Rom, for me, it was 12 when Rom put it in the middle of the green on 12, because that's the hole. 
that gets everybody. If you're going to blow the Masters, you lose it on 12. And, you know, he's stuck it right in the middle of the green. Two putt, get your par, get out. Yeah. Um, one thing, we'll, we'll move on from Rom and Brooks after this. One, one last thing about uh, Brooks, which was an all-timer. Uh, an all-time jab that I'm like 99% sure was was planned. But uh, on 15 on the early round, third round on Sunday, Brooks hits it, uh, his layup shot on 15, and the ball lands on the crosswalk. Mm-hmm. Where the page, did you see this? Uh, no, I don't think so, actually. Did I miss that? Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't know how you missed this. I, like, spit out my coffee watching this because it was so incredible. So, Brooks hits his layup shot on 15 on the crosswalk, and he's walking up to it, and, he, and Jim Nance goes, there's Brooks on the CW, the crosswalk. <laughs> he, like, paused. Oh, my gosh. Put some emphasis on the Brooks being on the CW. I think it was the planned ultimate backdoor jab, and I I lost it when he said that. It was incredible. I hope he meant it. I think he did, but um, that he that probably was did. So great to see. That was so great to see. Um, yeah, I, I okay. That makes sense because I did see him make a. I did see a couple of headlines on Twitter about that, but I just hadn't heard the audio yet. Yep. So. Well, yeah, I think Brooks, Rom covered them. I think Rom just dominated, ran away at this tournament. But what we got to get to next is our, our second place Masters, uh, our T second uh, Masters finisher this year. Brooks kept going. Phil Nicholson. Yeah. What the I know. fuck? <laughs> Are you, you know, kidding I think me? To this point, this really uh, opens up a whole discussion of pga tour versus live again i mean how can it not you had three of the top six guys patrick reed phil mickelson and brooks kepka and like here in my outside of phil but when i to your point you said it earlier i was on a couple of group texts with some guys too and we were saying anybody but kepka i don't yeah. know why i had that feeling it just and i didn't i caught myself not liking having that feeling either yeah yeah, because we used to ride for Brooks, dude. We used to love the oh, epic mentality, and I'm just here to win major championships. Like that's what made Brooks Brooks. And you said it earlier; it was good to see that for at least a couple of rounds again. And then I don't know, maybe it was the 54 holes. He used to play in 54 <laughs> holes. He would be the Masters champion if it was 54 holes. Yeah, yeah. No, Insert those good. jokes, which are great. But it look, I think it's does give live a little bit le- legitimacy having three of the top six guys finish there near the top, especially when it comes to world ranking points, they probably uh, that's, I don't know if I want to get into that, but they, the point is their, their argument got a lot stronger, but Phil Mickelson turned back the clock and bring it back to your original point shooting a 65 on Sunday paired with speed. Like, man, that was, that was a, fun pairing to watch on Sunday and like damn it if we don't love Phil I just I hate what he's doing with the whole live stuff or whatever but man he's great he really is he's awesome I I think he's awesome if if this was if live didn't exist and Phil was same old Phil and this happened this would be just a a massive celebration for Phil but another thing that was almost is surprising as his finish on Sunday was his outfit. The mm. man was wearing a t-shirt. A t-shirt <laughs> and a quarter zip. He looked like he was coaching like a division three basketball team, high flyers. Like, I mean, I could not he was wearing a t-shirt. And I want to say the quarter zip was tucked in. It was total dad mode, plant weekend warrior. And I couldn't believe that that's what he was wearing but and then he's got the bug eye shades all that combo together is just a disaster but i mean a t2 finish from phil who's a shell of a human being on his coffee uh on his coffee diet it was just a weird crazy finish that i couldn't believe it but i'm happy for him 
And, and to kind of go back to the live thing, what sucks about it is it's an impressive finish. They should be excited about it. For me and what I would think most golf fans, I don't give a shit. I'm not going to want to watch live after this. It's not going to be like, oh, these guys are good. I need to – no. I want to watch them play with the best players in majors or big tournaments. I don't want to watch – these washed up live guys that I still don't think have that much motivation to to play well at these random live tournaments. So um that's that. I can't believe Phil played so well. Um, but I, I'm happy for him. He needed this. To your point, I think you said it well. It doesn't make me want to turn on lit on uh, turn on the CW. It just doesn't. I'm sorry, because for what I said earlier, I want to see Brooks Kepka in the major championships. I don't care about Brooks Kepa at Colonial or Brooks Kepa wherever it is. I, I want to see him compete for U.S. Opens, PGA Championships, Masters, British Opens. I don't care about Patrick Reed. Sorry. H time represent, though. My right hashtag team read. Uh, Phil, all right. To your point, Phil. Think about the last couple of years, what this could have been for Phil Mickelson. He goes out and wins. The PGA Championship, oldest mat, oldest major championship winner of all time. Then he finishes second at the Masters. People should be throwing themselves up, Phil. They should be worshiping the ground that he sits on. The fact that he is 52, 53, whatever he is, years old, and still like in the mix of major championships and winning major championships. How are we not celebrating this? Instead, we're like, oh, you know, great. Let's just, you know, for one week, you turn back the clock. No, he's been yeah. doing this pretty consistently. Maybe not on a weekend, week out basis anymore, like he was during his younger years. But man, we should be just ooing and eyeing over what he's accomplishing at his age, playing at an extremely high level. And we're yeah. just, man, CBS did not even interview him after the round was over. They interviewed everybody and their mother, but they yeah. did not interview Phil Mickelson. That right there is so telling of how many people he has rubbed the wrong way, uh, how much damage that the powers of B think that he is for the game of golf right now, which is so unfortunate because his game is absolutely spectacular. Yeah. It actually was dog shit leading up to this week. <laughs> but It wasn't. It was. But, like, look, I mean, shout out to Freddie Couples, too, for oh, yeah. taking the cut, man. Like, guys like this, they can turn back the clock on at, at Augusta National. They know the course so well. And, uh, you know, this, this kind of brings me to one point, which I want to bring I want to bring it back here in a sec. But, you know, Augusta National, after the first two days, before the weather came in, I was thinking, man, these guys are really blown away the golf course. You know, you got Brooks sitting there at minus 12, Rom sitting at whatever it was. You have Sam Bennett, of like an amateur, go out there playing in the final group. I'm like, man, like, when's Augusta National going to bite back? And... It had some help from the elements, but it bit back. Pretty remarkable. Pretty remarkable how Augusta National will do that to you. Makes you think of Bryson DeChambeau calling it a par 67. And I don't think he's made the cut since. I think he did one time. But he didn't make the cut this week. Like, yep. Augusta National is such a special place. And, yeah, it's, it's pretty it's pretty remarkable. It really is. And before we, we praise Sam Bennett, I think we need to acknowledge – so just because we're on the topic – his his press conference on I think it was after his second round, he said something along the lines of like I've played harder courses than this, like Ridgewood or something. And I was like, Yeah, I don't know, man. Like I wouldn't be saying that right now. You should be really happy and thankful to be where you are, <laughs> how well you've played, <laughs> and it's still insane what he was able to do. And even though he wasn't really able to keep it together as well as he would have liked to. I was like, come on, man. But to praise him a bit, uh, I watched this guy for like 36 holes when he played in the U.S. Amateur, and he's he's just a player. Not a great swing mm -hmm. like you talked about. Doesn't hit it the furthest, but just feels like his game is rel relentless. So um, it felt like at times he was going to be able to really contend for this. And yeah. Yeah, I'd love to, love to just see the Texas representation continuing at Augusta. I, I hope he he uh, he's not a, a kind of one-hit wonder. I'd love to see him, you know, continue to do well. 
play on the PGA Tour, but he had teed it up today in his college tournament, and in Classic or Invitational or something. I'm not sure how he finished, but his whole story, how he started, how he finished, everything. It's, it's, it's so awesome. If you guys don't know his story, I don't know how you don't know his story at this point, but go check it out if you haven't. No, uh, that's so true. His story is pretty remarkable. Let me see uh, if I can pull up the Aggie Invitational leaderboard. But while while I'm doing that, pretty yeah, uh, he he said something a really unpopular opinion that Augusta National is not as hard as some of the other golf courses. And look, I don't, I don't think he's necessarily wrong, but he's also not correct. And here's why I say that, because he played Ridgewood at the U.S. Amateur, one, but that was a USGA event. Imagine if the USGA were to come into Augusta National and grow out that rough. Don't get him started. Yeah, I look, I don't want the USGA anywhere near Augusta National, actually, because you would, they would find a way to mess it up. Yeah. But, but USGA, to their credit, is good at setting up impossible golf courses or very difficult golf courses. So that's why the U.S. Open consistently – the winner's about even par, even one to two under, unless you're Gary yep. Woodland and you just break every record at Pebble Beach. But that's not the point. Yeah. So they set up golf courses tougher than the way Gus and National does. Again, it, it's kind of what we were saying earlier. That's just the way it sets up is so unique and different. And it gives you the ability to go absolutely low. But it's, I think this week proved it's hard to do it for four days in a row. You know, Brooks Kepka goes out and, Set at minus 12, can't break par the next two days. Sam Bennett, even the same way. He ends up with the 76-74. Justin Rose, 73-73. Uh, Gary Woodland, who shoots even one over even. Like, it's really hard to follow up. Mm-hmm. It, even Jordan Spieth, I'm looking at his round. 69-70, 76-66. It's, there's always that one round that will creep up and get you if you're not yeah. careful and you're not on. Yeah. Speaking of not being on, I think we need uh, to, to move to Rory. Go ahead. Give the floor is yours. What are we doing with Rory? What what's just just give us what you got. In the same way that John Rom did everything right, Rory McIlroy did everything wrong. <laughs> I don't really know how else to say it. He comes. I feel like he's giving me the the same shtick every single year. I'm coming in so relaxed. I'm so confident. Like I'm. I know how to play this golf course now. Yes, I've gotten some uh, some battle scars, but you know, I, I know I'm gonna win this golf tournament. I'm feeling really good. I'm I'm trending. He goes out and shoots 72, 77. And he was on the correct side of the draw. He didn't have to deal with the mm-hmm. elements and the weather. And he even did the CBS interview. He's like, Yeah, I'm still trying to stay patient. But like, bro, you gotta go out there and hit some golf shots. You got to go out and hit gosh shots. You got to go out and make putts when everybody's shooting 65, 66, whatever it was. Victor Hovland comes in early with the lead. Same with Brooks Kepka. Like, you you got to go out there and just – you got to go ball. You got to act and play like you're the number one player in the world. And you know what? He just he just doesn't – look, I don't know how to explain it. He just gets on the grounds at Augusta and then, like, forgets how to play golf. That That's my opinion. But here's well, the thing. Three years ago, he missed the cut. Or, yeah, three years ago, maybe two years ago. Two years ago, he missed the cut. Last year, he finished second, which made us – it was like fool's gold for us But because it was a backdoor second. He wasn't even close. It was like Phil Mickelson backdoor second this year. But then he misses the cut again this year. Like, what are we supposed to do with that as golf fans? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to give him – It was absolutely devastating. I was going to give him a tiny bit of credit because last year, he didn't have a chance, but – Final round 64. And I think that was because there was no pressure. And at this point with Rory, I look at it as, of course, there's the Masters pressure for the career Grand Slam. But there's the major pressure, too. And I think it being the first major of the year and the Masters, he's just tight. Like, he is – he can't get out of his own way. And I don't know what's – going to change his mentality. Um, I think I heard this on another podcast and they were saying it's almost getting to the point where everyone's saying or expecting he's going to win the Masters. 
complete the career, career grand slam. I think in his mind, he needs to get like the Jordan mentality of like, fuck you guys. Like you said, I wasn't going to complete the career grand slam and use that as fuel, but it's more of, okay, I'm tiger said I was going to complete the career grand slam this week. So, you know, I guess I got to, when am I going to do this? I'm cautious, whatever, but, yeah, dude, this week was so disappointing because I was thinking about the 64 last year and I was like, just make the cut, man. The weather's going to be bad this weekend. Anything can happen. You can shoot a 64, make the cut, and he just just pissed it away. It was, it was brutal. I really would like for him to win a major this year and hopefully one day the Masters, but I don't know, man. I think at this point you could you could convince me he's never going to do it. Also, to not be too reactive as a golf fan, he's like 34, probably has five to seven more really decent chances at it. I would say 10, mm-hmm. 10 years he, I could see him winning. So I won't be too freaked out, disappointed. I would like to see him win another major this year. I think that could free him up a little bit, but man, not what we wanted to see as golf fans. No, it was not. I, I think the mental scarring is getting too much. Yeah. And look, I hope somebody clips this and keeps it. And seven years from now, they're like, hey, look at you. You're an idiot. Next year. I would love that. Next, Next year, year. I don't care. Look, Roy McIlroy, please prove me wrong. <laughs> I would love to eat my words here. But the fact of the matter is, ever since he blew that lead in 2011, he has not won a major since. And let's not forget about what happened last year at the Open Championship. Wait, he had a lead going into the back nine at the old course. The old course is like the mecca of golf. Think about all the great champions who have won the Masters and won the British Open at the old course. That is a absolute staple of solidifying yourself as one of the all-time greats. And he had it in his grasp. And Cam Smith said, hold my beer. <laughs> he did. It, and it's not like Rory blew it. Because what, he hit like 17 or 18 greens? But the problem is he couldn't make a birdie. <laughs> he, yeah. he was playing too patient again. I, I think he, he needs to be an absolute killer. I think yeah, he two put it every hole. hole. That's yeah. right. And Granted, I, Cam Smith fired a 64 on him, which was brutal, but it was Who there. Cares? Yeah. He was there. He had the lead. He played with them. You know what? At that point, it's a match play scenario. It, you yeah. know, it's just your two. And then Cam Young can, came in the mix too, but that was weird. But look, yeah, when, when Cam Smith is coming up on your tail, you you think, all right, this is match play. I got to go shot for shot with you. We're making we're going for birdies here. Uh, I don't look, think they you, even played together, though. I think they did. No. I'm pretty sure they did. <laughs> no. Was Cam Smith in the group above him? The, it or was, the group ahead of him? Yeah. Uh yeah, let's was. see. I'm I'm going to my uh snap person here. <laughs> oh, Dad Gummit, you're so right. That is trash. I'm yep. gonna eat my words here a little bit. He played with Victor Hovland. Yeah. On a round. Which well, who cares? Even still, you you know what's going on ahead of you. That's even worse. That's even worse. You know what's going on ahead of you, and so you know what you have to do. Yeah. Let's uh, – Look, speaking all of right, Victor, here's all I got to say. Here's a, I just want in on this. Rory McIlroy is not one of – the narrative is he can't win at Augusta, and he has not won a major championship in a decade. In a decade. When he came out and won four majors under the age of 25, it was – it was speed before speed. You know, everybody was crowning him as the next Tiger Woods. And he is on an absolute drought. Now, let's not forget that Tiger Woods, after he won, what was it, 12 majors in like two years, <laughs> it felt like. But when he was winning all of them, there was a big gap in between his uh, a few of his majors. Going through swing changes and all that stuff. But And yeah. then, obviously, it went 11 years before his win at Augusta. But, look, it's definitely possible. And it's – the narrative is he can't win majors, not big golf tournaments, because he's won the Tour Championship. He's won the players in that time. So he's won big golf tournaments. He's been in the mix. But for some reason, you throw the word major on it. it it's not he doesn't forget to play golf because he's in the mix. He just doesn't win. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it sucks. And, I, and let's give a little optimism here. Please. Can you look up when Phil won his first major? Because I know it was super late. Phil's got six, seven. I think Rory could potentially win five majors. Easy. Or none. Probably not none. No green, no masters. But so, so Mickelson uh, won at the age of 34 for the first time. Okay. And Rory McIlroy is 33. Okay. He's so, the 10, I, there is a lot of potential for Rory to win a shit ton of majors. We're just <laughs> in a dry spell. <laughs> we are in a hell of dry spell. But <laughs> that's you're an absolute drought, not a dry spell. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't. This is uh, what's the ranch in uh, in holes? The ranch in holes? No clue. The I know camp. what you're talking about. It's like the lake that drew up, that dried yeah. up, right? That's gonna bother me. I'm tired of digging, Grandpa. I'm tired of digging his Ferrari. The man <laughs> Green man. Lake, Camp Green Lake. Camp Green Camp Lake, Greenlake. Green Jacket, man. This is – I'm going to watch Holes when he wins the Masters. <laughs> I'm starting to feel some synergies here. This – I don't know. I'm starting to feel good after this conversation. But just think about Phil's career started at 34. Rory can do this. He can go on a tear. I don't think he's going to have injury problems. I think he's strong, flexible, built, really care, takes care of himself. So – Let's. It's easy to bury the man right now. He should be buried. I'm concerned. We got a lot of potential here. We got a lot of golf left. A lot of great <laughs> golf ahead of Roy McIlroy. There's no doubt about that. Here's my only issue, though. Think about how many good players there are now. Yeah. Scotty Scheffler wasn't even on the scene two years ago on the PGA Tour, and he's won almost everything, it seems like, in the last 18 months. And then throw in Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas, who missed the cut. Really bad showing by JT there, by the way. But, well, uh, he got the bad side of the draw. Uh, <laughs> Kala Morikawa. I mean, look at this leaderboard, dude. There were some really good people up there at the top. I mean, even some of the live guys, they got to come back and compete in majors. Uh, Spieth, Cam Young, dude, that guy's going to win major championships. Vic- Victor Hovland, Scheffler, Fitzpatrick, Shoffley, Morikawa, Woodland, all these guys, a lot of them have won majors already. And they're not going yeah. away anytime soon. Yeah. No, the, the competition's insane, but Roy's still up there. I think I think I'll get yeah, one this he year. Is. I think I'll get one this year. Um I hope you're right. Uh another thing we talked about in the Masters um preview was the thirteenth hole. I was mm-hmm. a big fan of the thirteenth hole this week. I thought I it was I thought you had a really good balance of two and three shot, uh, two and three shot hole. Uh, a lot of birdies, a lot of balls ending up in the creek. It wasn't a eight iron into green. So I think that was a really good, um, really good redesign. And I think it played really well. And I think one of the craziest things I've seen since watching the Masters was just kind of thinking about this distance thing. Granted, it was all weather causing, but <laughs> those guys that had to finish on on Saturday, they're hitting Cam Young and I think Rom hit 240 yard drives on 18. Mm. Three woods into 18. It was it was insane. And again, let's bring this all back to Rom. Bad into the draw has to finish what eight holes in that weather. And he's yeah. still at the top of the leaderboard. He's the best player this week. Deserved it. So, it's one billion stuff. percent. Good uh, stuff. How about uh, Mr. Masters himself, Jordan Spieth? Man, if he just like can get within <laughs> five shots on Sunday, I think he he's gonna win every time. Just, it's, it's I don't special. know what happened there, man. He, yeah, what he no. shoot? So his. The problem was that round three. Now, round three got a lot of those guys uh, due to yeah. the weather. But even on day one, man, he knocked it in the water and raised Creek on 13. Like, if he doesn't do that, makes a silly double, then he's sitting at 
uh, 10 under par with the on sitting on the 18 T, which I don't know why he keeps hooking it left on the last day on 18. But look, if he's sitting at 10 under par right there, makes even a par, then that puts just that more that much more pressure on John Rahm and Kepka at that yeah. point. Yeah, but I mean, speed great showing, man. He needs another green jacket. The fact that he only has one is tragic. Yeah, yeah, it feels like he has three. Um, yeah, that was, I don't know. It, it's so entertaining watching him on the back nine on Sunday. He's always, almost always going to make a charge. Um, love me some master speed. Uh, I guess a few other things. Willie Z out for the year. That's pretty unfortunate. Very. Um, JT's miscut made me really sad. He, uh, what, eight over on his last 10 or six or something uh, or no six over on his last eight for a 42 mm-hmm. to miss the cut by one. That was really tough. He, he finally seemed like he was playing well, hasn't played well here in a while. Putting was kind of all over the place. And then he's got to pack the bags. That was, that was tough, but I did think it was cool that he said, he tweeted out that he's like, I'm, I'm going to watch this whole week, this whole weekend. Yeah. As a as a player and a fan, so I don't know about you, Scotty T. I loved it. I almost feel like I have a like golf hangover. I I think I don't even know if I'll watch the the Heritage this week, but I got my fix this weekend for sure. Oh, one hundred percent. Hey, did you see Rory McIlroy already WD'd? Yeah, from the Heritage this week. Why? I don't know why. It's a bit concerning. <laughs> I, it it, it kind of is, but you know what? As long as he gets ready for What's next? Uh, PGA? PGA yeah. is next? No idea. Yeah, go get ready for the PGA, man. Yeah. Do what you got to do. You don't need to play every single week. I understand it's an elevated event, but the fact that they have an elevated event right after the Masters is – they might need to rethink that for next year, if you ask me. But Oh, shit. I didn't even realize that's an elevated event. Yeah. yeah. It that's is. not ideal. That's not ideal. Yeah, right? It feels like somebody really kind of screwed up there, but – Hey, maybe we need to tune in the lib then if they're playing this week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no. So, um, yeah, no, I think it, think it's a, uh, it's an interesting time right now. I'm with you, golf hangover, one billion percent. But uh, I love Augusta National. I love the Masters. Can't say much more about it. Tivon, I think we've done a pretty good job of capturing everything so far. Again, phenomenal week, Masters. It doesn't get much better. Uh, some closing thoughts. Um, the goat. Tiger Woods withdrawing. I wish they would delete those videos from the internet of him limping. <laughs> delete them. We don't need to see that. But the but the fact that he made the cut was pretty remarkable. I know that the cut moved up to plus three, and he was sitting right on the number. But the streak continues of his most made cuts in a row at was it twenty one now? And he even took yeah, off a few right. years. Yeah. Um. Did you hear the story that came out today about his WD at Southern Hills? I so, did. I think Jason Day mentioned it. That That's how the story got released. But he WD'd at the PGA Championship last year. And they said he said that one of the screws actually punctured in his foot, punctured the skin in his foot. It came out of his foot. So... I don't know what this what the future holds. This is kind of what I expected, I think, with Tiger. Uh, a cut made, but probably won't contend. And then I was always worried about the forecast with Tiger. I can't imagine the cold yeah. yet. Start and you stop. Were. I don't know, man. I think it's going to have to be perfect conditions. And he's got to be feeling good and just a lot of factors for for him to be in contention, maybe even to play all four days. So it's sad. Mm-hmm. I think I forget that he almost lost his leg, but yeah, I don't know. It, he's been through so tough. much, dude. Four knee surgeries, all the back surgeries, having his spine fused together, the car accident. The guy is like Iron Man right now. He's been 
put together. He's like a inspector gadget with all the gizmos and everything. And I'm now it, it feels like, yeah. but it's it, the fact that he's still competing. I don't know if we appreciate it enough. We, I don't know if we appreciate the mental toughness, the physical toughness that it takes in order. Cause look, Augusta national. Yeah. You're walking, but it's not the easiest course to walk. It is very hilly Probably the hardest. out there. Uh, yeah, it's definitely up there. I can't think of a harder one off the top of my head. I'm sure there may be a few major championship venues here or there that they'll play every, you know, three or five years. Like, I'm sure Whistling Straits does not look easy to walk. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Hills didn't look that easy to walk either. I could be wrong. But, uh, yeah. So, it's – look, we wish him the best. We wish him for recovery, and hopefully we'll see him out soon. But take care of yourself, Tiger. If we need to see you again next year at the Masters, then so be it. <laughs> That's, But, yeah, that was, um, you know, proud of him for making the cut and putting on a show. Um, let's yeah. see who else. Uh, Russell Henley, T4, very unexpected. That was a really good value pick. A guy I want to talk about, you know, I'm very confused about not only his game and his attire, but Victor Hovland. Okay. His shirt on Thursday, the announcer said it looks like they washed, he did laundry with a bunch of highlighters, and it just looked like <laughs> a, a watermelon trippy shirt that I don't know an explosion of flavor was terrible and he keeps doing this Jay Lindbergh the worst brand clothing brand game but uh Victor man I don't know what it is he hits the ball so damn good he putts really good it's always seems like comes down to the chipping but anytime and a lot of the time he's near the leaderboard these majors just don't take him seriously I'm just thinking this, this guy's not going to – it just feels like this guy never really keeps it together for, for all four days, but he's always near the end going into Saturday or Sunday. But um, it just seems like chipping is always kind of what's holding him back. Mm. And I just – he's also – I think he's only 25. I think he's got – I mean, he's getting really good reps, really good experience, but it just feels like – I don't take him seriously at the majors when he's at the top of the leaderboard. Yeah. And it's, I think for something, maybe somebody like him, there's an element of comfortability being in that moment. How do you handle that? I think he just needs to get used to being at the top uh, before maybe he takes himself seriously in that regard. I mean, I'd say that he doesn't, I'm sure he does. And then, you know, putting every effort into any shot, but more that self-belief of man, you yeah. know, I can go out and win this golf tournament right now. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I mean, he'll get there. He's gonna end up with a couple majors, I think, when it's all said and done. I mean, his game is just too good. Yeah, his iron game's too good too. It's like, yeah, if it, if the chipping gets in the way, cool. But he can go out and hit seventeen, eighteen greens, and no problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think another storyline from this week is uh, Cantley is getting a lot of heat for the slow play. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna work my way down there. Um. Yeah, dude. That's especially when he's playing in front of some of the two fastest players on yeah. tour. Yikes. Yeah, that Brooks was... was insanely fast, but I think you're always gonna get some heat from people when you're slow and you're a slow golfer. That's probably the one of the worst things in the world is a slow golfer. And once you get that label, it's hard to shake, man. It's hard. another guy who who felt really slow was Sam Bennett. He felt like he was taken forever, and I, I hope he fix that, fixes that by the time he gets to the tour. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the first hole, those dudes are just – after the first hole, they're walking the second tee, and they're just sitting on the benches for – felt like 15 minutes. And Yeah. I don't know if that, that messed with Brooksy a little bit, but, yeah, when you watch Patrick Cantlay play, it looks like he just stands over the ball for – I don't know, way too long and yeah. not ideal, not ideal. He's and like no more Garcia Parra in golf, just like yeah. readjusting, readjusting, and then. And what's also total bullshit, I just remembered this. There was a amateur, I don't know if it was the Asia Pacific amateur that won probably 10 to 15 years ago. It was a 16-year-old Asian kid who made – 
who won the amateur tournament. Whatever reason, he was playing in the Masters. Yes. They gave that kid a two-shot penalty for slow play. I don't know if that's ever happened. And you have these guys that are competing and big names, whatever. That, that's never going to happen. They give this poor kid a two-shot penalty at Augusta. One of the sickest moments in golf. I hated that. And I don't know. There's such a big deal about slow play. It's it's all talk. No one enforces anything. And, of course, you do it to a 16-year-old kid. Hate to see yeah. that. Anyway. So I just, I just Googled it. And we know how good I am with names. So let's see <laughs> how we do here. Uh, Tian Lang Guang, the 14-year-old eighth grade student 14. from China. He was 14. 14. He worse. earned the spot in the 2019 Masters by winning the 2012 Asian Pacific Amateur Tournament in Thailand. Became the youngest golfer ever to qualify for the Masters. Yes, he got a two-shot penalty at Augusta National for still play. It's disgusting. That hey, That's man. disgusting. It is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I forgot about that. That just that puts a bad taste in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so a couple other – I want to highlight three more people before we move on, T-Bone. Uh, Cameron Young. Cameron Young is going to be a great golfer for a long time. They talked a lot about friend of the pod, Paul Tesori, being on the bag mm-hmm. too and how that is helping him out. But, I mean, the fact that he even shot even par and then in three over on Saturday and still finished T7, he's going to be around for a long time. He's going to play a lot of Ryder Cups too. He makes a lot of birdies. I think he's going to be a great Ryder Cup player especially in Italy, come this fall for the Ryder Cup. Uh, Scotty Scheffler finished T10 and played terrible. I am <laughs> sorry. Let me rephrase. He de- he hit the ball really good. He did not make a single putt all week, did not have his A game, especially on the greens, and still finished tied for 10th. That's how good of a player he is. Uh, I mean, for a defending champion that finished top 10, I think that's a really positive, great showing. And he wasn't yeah. even down on himself. He hit good putts. It's just hard to make putts at Augusta National sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like he was getting upset a little bit, which I never have seen from him. Yeah. There's a video of him getting pretty heated on the practice screen. But we talked about it. It's hard to defend. And, yeah, it's pretty insane that it just looked like he hacked it up and has a T10. So <laughs> Yeah. Uh, same impressive. same with Colin Morikawa. Colin Morikawa did not – was kind of like around but didn't have his best stuff, still finished top 10. The sign of a good player, in my opinion, is how well do you play when you don't have your A game? And the fact that these guys did not have their A games for a few weeks or for, for a couple of days and still finish that high shows the quality of players that they are. And, um, you know, Morikawa's got two. Scheffler's already got one. These guys are going to be a force to reckon with. Last player, T-Bone, I want to highlight is Zahid Figala for the ninth finish. What a chip-in on 16 that he had finishes with a 67 on the final round. Uh, He was on full swing, played in his first Masters, gets invited back for next year. Local Houstonian. He's a Houstonian, baby. (laughs) You beat me to it. I I think he lives in the woodlands. Yeah. Uh, so Heath, if ever you hear this and you want to come on the pod, come on to with some fellow Estonians. We'll go and play Herman Park. <laughs> with all due respect, so Heath, please invite us to wherever you're a member at. Um, yeah. But hey, also happy to take you to her anytime, anytime. Um, Absolutely. But uh, that's really all that I got in terms of players. t I think you mentioned the golf course, 13. Good adjustment. I think the weather played a factor into it as well, but it showed that you hit a good drive, you can go for the green. If not, you're laying up. And then that wedge shot, dude, from 40, 50 yards with how undulated that green is, is really dicey. So uh, a yep. good change, I think, yep. as as well. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's golf gossip or not, but apparently Greg Norman is not really invited back to Augusta National at the moment, which is hilarious. Uh, I mean, he's not not uninvited. I'm – that's tongue in cheek. Um, how about the Masters app? Masters app. It's by far the best app I think ever. Maybe ever. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's so good. I I've got everything. It's mm-hmm. got everything. 
Uh, T-Bone, you also sent me a funny text about the coverage on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Give me some of your thoughts there for the good people, um, and then we'll do one or two more things and get out of here. Cool. Yeah, so the reason I was upset was I was having a small master's party on Saturday. And basically, you could not watch the leaders or so first off the tv coverage on cbs they were showing which i was looking forward to but they were showing a uh some i can't remember what it's called but it was, what it was called but it was jack tiger and scotty there's some interview kind of reminiscing on past masters victories and stuff they were playing that the plan was to play that an hour before the coverage bump up tea times and I realized the leaders have teed off and they're playing that and they're not playing that they're playing the show with Scotty Jack and Tiger and if you go to the masters.com they're not a featured group so you could watch them on I think four five and six was a segment or a section on the masters app where you can watch golfers that was the only time you could watch the leaders on Saturday so it ended up getting rained yeah. out pretty early, but I was like, it feels like we would make adjustments with the TV coverage or definitely make them a featured group. And I was like, what's my, what am I going to have people watch at my party? And then, and then my party turned into let's watch the Astros lose. And then we just ended up watching 2019 masters. And it was pretty awesome. So, <laughs> but coverage it too is, always kind of kind of weird um but i don't know tv's tv rights all that stuff is always complicated but yeah um, i was disappointed you know i think did a really good job though is trevor immelman trevor immelman uh first year i believe sitting in for the retired sir nick faldo great commentary Wait, another thing what happened to nick faldo uh, i think he just retired well, it said he came out of retirement for the Masters, and then we never saw him. Yeah, I didn't see him at all. I was, I saw that as well, but he, I didn't hear him at all on the broadcast. Heard <laughs> Vern Lundquist, though, that guy who actually is retired, who has some of the best calls <laughs> of all time with the yes, sir, in 86, and then in your life, have you seen anything like that in 2005? Uh, he comes out, and he still calls Augusta. I love that. So, real quick about Nick Faldo. I have a I have a uh, a loyal listener who despises Nick Faldo. Despises Nick Faldo, and I've never he's never really. I don't know. I don't love him. Don't hate him. He's just kind of whatever. <laughs> he sent me a link, and he goes watch. And it was the old Masters coverage, and it was watch like hour four minute whatever second but So we had it like almost bookmarked. And it was one of the worst calls I've seen in, in golf. And it was unfortunately a bad scenario. And he basically, when Patrick Reed won, he was warming up on the mass or on the driving range. And they said some reference about how he listens to Imagine Dragons. And when he won, Nick Faldo's call was like, Welcome to the New Age, Patrick Reed. That's <laughs> one of the worst calls ever. And then last year, he kind of blew the surprise of Rory chipping in from the bunker. So I was like, okay, I can see why you don't like the guy. But um, it was funny because I never thought much of him. I honestly liked him. I liked Feldo. But those two there, I was like, that's all, That's all. those are punishable offenses for sure. Yeah, those are the two offenses that came to mind as me as well. And it was – not yeah, not good. Welcome to the new age. To the new age. He <laughs> like repeated himself. <laughs> and then right. yeah, you can't blow a call like that too with Rory McIlroy holding out and Morikawa. Like, what are we yeah. doing here, man? That's such yeah. a rookie mistake. Uh, <laughs> you know, people blast Azing her on on NBC, but I think Paul Azinger compared to Nick Faldo was awesome. <laughs> yeah, Azinger's just weird. I'm yeah, like, oh boy, look at this, Raj. He's getting nervous. 
Oh, can he handle the pressure? Can he handle the pressure? <laughs> uh, good stuff. Man. Yeah. Well, T Bone, I think that's all that I got. Um, again, Augusta National does not disappoint. It really doesn't. Everything that goes with it, the pageantry, the golf course, the traditions, it it's it's kind of corny sometimes, but dang it if it's not amazing. And it delivers every single time. Well done this week. I, I, nothing but praises, in my opinion. I wish the finish would have come down to the wire. Like if you had – imagine if you had a Phil Mickelson and Henrik Stenson match with Brooks Kepka and John Rahm yeah. uh, with the PGA Tour versus the Live, these guys just throwing haymakers at each other. And uh, John Rahm just ran away with it. He ran away with it because everybody fell back. And even the people who were catching him, he was just too far away at that point. So yeah. congratulations to John Rahm. Yep. Yeah. Well done. Fantastic. Well, before we get out of here, comment below or send us an email. Follow us on social media. DM us on what your thoughts were of the Masters 2023. We love to hear from you. Uh, so follow us on social media at 3NFR Pod. That's the number three, 3NFR Pod. So again, subscribe, rate, and review. Five stars, comment, and a phenomenal week. I just, I don't really know what else to say. It makes me sad. It makes me sad. Yep. But I'm not going to cry because it's over. I'm going to be glad <laughs> that it happened. And we yep. get to look forward to another Masters for next year. But that is the cover in the title page of this year's edition of the Masters. Man, how oh. about that? You like that the, the cover <laughs> in the title page? If you understand that reference, that would I actually be great. Don't. I don't. But that is good. that is actually the last line in C.S. Lewis's C.S. Lewis's The Last Battle of the mm. the Chronicles of Narnia series. Okay, yeah, I'm not a nerd, so. Well, look, I I went to a, I went to a private Christian school growing up, so we learned we we read all those books. But uh, this is getting off the rails here. Um, next week, RBC Masters Hangover. Don't really care. Maybe already I in the PGA championship, but T bone appreciate it, man. Good week. And congrats to me for winning the master's pool. Yeah, no, that was big <laughs> Think to wrap us up. No top five this week, purely, purely masters recap. But as we always say, give us some DMS, give us some ideas for a new top five next week and we'll get after it. Fantastic. Well, we appreciate you, the listeners, for helping grow this podcast as we revamp it for this year, 2023. Some hopefully new videos going to be dropping too here in the next couple of weeks, but T-Bone will offline about that. But in the meantime, I'm Scotty T, and for T-Bone, what a year for the Masters. And remember, what a white ball is like.